So today we're going to cover the unit one review. So I'm just going to go through it. Unless there's someone that has a specific question, we can jump straight to that one. But for the most part, there's only 10 problems. So I don't see us taking the entire two hours going over those 10 problems. So if you want, we can just start with number one and go through it, unless you have a question like you want to ask us right now. Okay. Um, so there's not a whole lot going on. There's the distance between two points. This one's just asking to plot two points, then find the distance, then find the midpoint. Eventually it asks you some definition problems. It asks you to write the standard form of an equation for a circle. Here's another one for a circle, another one. These are all super easy because they give you the center and the radius, right? So those are super simple. Um, this one might not be as simple because you do need to go find that radius. They give you the center, but they don't give you the radius. So you have to find it. And then this one's even harder because you don't, you're don't you not given the center or the radius, okay? And so you have to, I usually draw them and try to make out what it's saying, but you have to find both the center and the radius for number eight. Number nine, it just wants you to identify the center and the radius and then use that information to draw it. If you've tried this problem already, you've probably figured out how to draw it. If not, we'll do it right now. So you'll figure out how to draw those circles in there. Um, and then the next one is pretty much the same thing. It's just, it looks different than this equation for number nine, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start through them. And that's essentially what your test is gonna be over. It's just distance and midpoint formulas and then the circle, okay? There's not much else on this test, okay? It's a nice one. Take advantage of <laughs> the fact that there's not too many concepts on this on this test. Okay. So for number one, let me write it down and then um, I'll go over to my camera and then we can work it out. So we've got five, seven, and zero, nineteen, and they're asking us for the distance. And so I will put these formulas in the test. For the online class, it'll be in the test. When you open the test, the formulas will be there. For the face-to-face -face class, you guys will have a formula sheet and we'll have the distance formula and the midpoint formula. And it will have that standard form of the equation as well, okay? But that's really all that you'll have on the test, which is pretty much all you need. So let's go to the camera. And so for here, I'm going to write out that formula for the distance. Then you will be given this formula. If you can memorize it, fantastic. If you cannot, you will have it as a reference. Now, before I start plugging all the numbers in for the um, X's and the Y's, I'm first gonna label these guys up here. So I'm gonna call this one the X coordinate of my first point, Y coordinate of my first point, X coordinate of the second point, and then Y coordinate of the second point. Once I have those labels, it's a little bit easier on our eyes to like put the numbers where they belong, right? So then now x2, which is zero, goes in this spot. x1, which is five, goes in this spot. y2, which is 19, goes there. And y1, which is seven, goes there. This one's nice in the fact that all the numbers inside the points were zero or positive, okay? So it didn't look weird when I plugged it in. But if any of these numbers are negative, you have to be very careful when you plug them in. You have to make sure you use the minus from the formula and you plug in those negative numbers wherever it is they go, okay? So some cases you might have a double negative back to back. Just be very mindful of that. I'm sure we'll see one as we keep going through this review, okay? So when I get here, I have to do what's in the parentheses and that gives me negative five. And then I do what's in the parentheses there and I get 12. Now, one of the most common things that I was getting people messages from 
I think I got one or two messages from people in this class that may or may not be in this room because there's other people in this class that are not here. They chose to like just stay online. Um, but then I also have the online students that were messaging me a lot. And the error that they were making was that when they did this computation, they had just eliminated the parentheses. And so what they were doing is they were saying, this is negative five squared and this is 12 squared. And then that was causing them to get a negative 25 and then 144. And then they were getting the square root of whatever that is. What is that? Just out of curiosity. 119. And then this was not the right answer. And so they were getting frustrated, right? Do you see the error, right? The error is that they did not bring down those parentheses. And those parentheses are super important because you should be adding two positive numbers together always, no matter what. Because when you square numbers, it doesn't matter if that number on the inside is a positive or if that number on the inside is a negative. Once you square it, it's gonna be positive. So you should be adding two positive numbers together inside your radical, always, okay? So if you're getting a negative, it's because somewhere you probably forgot your parentheses, okay? So be very, very careful. This is not the way to do it. But I noticed there were quite a few people doing that um, at home, okay? So I wanted to make sure that we don't do that on the test, right? <laughs> Okay, so here I should get those positive numbers, which are positive 25 and positive 144. And then when I add those, I get 169. And when I take the square root of that, I do get 13. And I did get a replacement calculator for the other one. We do have a new one. And that's all they want for that problem. It's just that number. Um, Unless the directions are very specific as to how they want the answer, notice this has no directions on how it wants the answer. Give them the exact answer. We're lucky in that we got just a regular 13, right? That's not too complicated. But if you do have square roots, make sure, oh, look, it does tell me something once I click in there. <laughs> it says enter an exact number, which is exactly what I want to do. But mine was exact, so it was not complicated. What if you ended up with something like the square root of five? It has to go in there as square root of five. Don't try to put a decimal or anything like that. Okay. So now this next one wants us to plot. So I'm gonna grab my little dot here and I'm gonna go over one for X and then up one for Y. Then the second point, I'm gonna go over 13 for X, but then I'm gonna go up six for Y. And then let me see, yeah, I did that right. So I plotted the points, that's all you needed to do for that particular problem, and that was it. Then now part B says for me to find the distance between those two problems. So that I am going to have to write down. So part A, we did in WebAssign. For part B is where I'm gonna have to write this down. And this one is a lot like number one in that all my numbers are positive. And so I don't have um, any of those negatives in there yet. There's still more problems though. Should probably run into it eventually. So here's my formula again. And you do not have to write down the formula when you're doing the test. I write it down just so that it's easy for you to see where everybody's coming from. So in this case, let's label x1, y1, x2, y2. And we'll start plugging these guys in. So which number is going to go first? Mm -hmm. And then the next number after the minus? And my plus, and then the next number after this parentheses. Minus the last number, yes. So let's compute, we get 12 and five. That's convenient, we had those numbers earlier. So I already know what the answer is gonna be. That's just coincidence. It turned out to be the exact same thing. <laughs> it's okay, it happens sometimes. 
So I'm going to type in here 13 and then midpoint. That's actually a point. Okay. So let me write down the formula on my paper and then we will do part C. So for part C, it wants the midpoint. And that has a totally different formula. It's x1 plus x2 over 2, and then y1 plus y2 over 2. So be careful. You do the minuses in the parentheses for the distance formula, but do you do plus for the midpoint? Now, I already have my points labeled up there. So I'm just going to plug them in. So I'm going to have 1 plus 13 over 2 and 1 plus 6 over 2. So I get 14 over 2, 7 over 2, and that can reduce to 7 and 7 halves. Again, they like exact answers. Um, because this is a nice decimal, it probably will take 3.5 as well unless it specifically says it wants a fraction. On the test, it's multiple choice, right? So you'll see whether the answers look like fractions or whether they look like decimals, okay? And then you just need to find the one that is equivalent to your answer. Let's go see what they say. How are we supposed to type that in? It doesn't tell me specifically. So I'm just going to say 7, comma, 7 over 2. Now here it's asking me a conceptual uh, question. So it's saying the equation x minus h all squared plus y minus k all squared equal to r squared is the standard form of the equation of a what? Square, line, circle, or parabola. Mm -hmm. With the center of what? HK, good. And then the radius is what letter? R. Yep, you got it. So then now number four wants us to basically take that info from number three and use it for number four. So let me flip over my paper and let me write this information down. So we have a center of zero, zero and a radius of two. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down that information from number three. So number three said that this was the equation of a circle where the center was h comma k and the radius was um, r. And so literally, the definition tells us this is the equation for this information. We're just basically going in the reverse order, right? We're given the information and we need to give them this, okay? So let's go ahead. Let's identify the three numbers. What is H, what is K, and what is R? How about H, what is that? Mm -hmm. How do you know which one is the, which is the zero that stands for H? This zero, the first one or the second one? Mm -hmm. The X value is our H. This one's H and that one's K. So H happens to be zero and K also happens to be zero. What about R? Two. And so we're literally just plugging those numbers into our equation. So it's X minus at zero plus Y minus the other zero equal to two squared. I don't even need the parentheses because the radius will never be negative ever. The radius is a distance, right? So it can't be negative. Okay, and then you're just gonna clean it up because I promise you your choices are not gonna look like that, okay? Instead of writing x minus zero, what could I write instead? Just x. And so it'll just be x squared, right? 
Same thing here, this would just be a y squared. And then what would I have on the right-hand side? Four. And that's more like something you will find in your choices. Okay, let me go to the other one because the other one had a different um, set of information. And I do have one announcement. I'll do it at the end of class because it doesn't really pertain to the online students. But there's something about the COVID testing I have to mention. So remind me, <laughs> I forget at the end of class to talk about that. So for this one, it's literally the same thing. Identify the H, the K, and the R, and then put them in the formula, right, in the equation. So here, what is H? Negative seven. What is the K? And what is the R? Mm -hmm. And so now I'm gonna plug everybody in. And notice I just left the H, the K, and the R blank. So I'm gonna plug in the H, which was a negative seven, the K, which was four, and the R, which is two. And so here's where I have a double negative. If you clean it up, what will it look like inside the parentheses? Mm -hmm. And then this one, can you clean it up? No, it just stays like that. And then what will I end up with on this side? Four. Which is again, coincidence is the same as the previous problem. But that's all they want. They don't want you to do anything else besides that. Let's just put in the numbers and clean it up, okay? I think we have one more of these easy ones <laughs> and then it starts to get a little bit more complicated. Okay, yes, number six. The center is four and negative five and the radius is square root of 15. One more of these pretty simple ones. So in this case, what is the H? Mm -hmm. What is the K? And then what is the R? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to plug everybody into my formula. So notice I'm literally writing the formula out, but instead of writing the H, the K, and the R, I'm just leaving it blank, right? And then I'm just gonna put in everybody where they belong. So H goes here, K goes there, and then R goes here. Can I clean up the first set of parentheses? No, so it's gonna stay X minus four squared. Can I clean up the second set of parentheses? Mm -hmm. What will it become? Y plus five, good. And then can I clean up the right-hand side? What do I get? What do I end up with? Yes, because the little root and the two just cancel, right? You just have the 15. Okay. okay, so those are the easy ones, right? <laughs> the other ones, the other two are a little bit harder, not too bad, but they're a little bit um, more complex than those than those three. So number seven is a little different. It says you do have a center, so that's great. Um, but then it tells you solution point. Okay, it tells you that. Now just remember that a solution point graphically is just another point on the circle somewhere, okay? So when they use that phrase solution point, just remember that this just means another point on the circle or a point on the circle, not really necessarily another, right? Because is this point on the circle? It's not on the circle. 
it's in the middle of the circle, right? It's the center of the circle. So really the word another, maybe not the best word here, <laughs> but it is a point on the circle. Okay, a solution point is just a point on the circle. So if you have the center and you have a point on the circle, who knows where it is? Let's just pretend it's somewhere right there. And I only guessed over there on that side because it says negative two and then up 19, right? So for me, it made sense it would be somewhere over there. But how do I figure out the radius? Because I know the H and the K because I was given the center, right? So we know that the H is three and the K is seven. Our problem is, is what the heck is R? We have to have that info in order to plug it into our equation. How do you suggest we find this radius here? Mm -hmm. Into what? Which one? The distance from it, yeah. So we're gonna find R is gonna be the same thing as finding the distance. And we do know, I'm using the wrong color. We do know that formula, I used it three times on the other page. So the radius is going to be the distance between those two points, right? The center and that um, solution point. Okay, before I do that, then let me label these guys. So I'm gonna call this one X1 and Y1. What is going on? My pins are not working. There we go. And then X2 and Y2. That way I can plug those guys in. So then X2 is a negative two, my minus sign. X1 is a three. Y2 is a 19, my minus sign. And then Y1 is seven. So I get negative five squared and 12 squared. Again, these numbers, that's okay. Oops, I'm already going too far. My brain knows the next step, right? <laughs> so it's already trying to write it. There we go. And then we get the square root of 169, which we know is 13. Oh, I shouldn't have boxed that. That's not my answer. Is that my answer? No, that was just my middle step, right? What does this 13 represent? The radius, exactly. So now I know what R is. This is my R. So my radius is 13. Okay. Now that I have those three pieces of information, now I can finally write the equation, right? So we do X minus the blank, Y minus the blank equals to something squared. So H goes in here. That's the three. K goes in there. That's the seven. And then R goes in here, and that's the 13. Now, can you clean up this parentheses? No, it's just going to stay like that. X minus three squared. Can you clean up this parentheses? No, don't forget your plus sign in the middle. Some people were texting me their work and they were forgetting plus signs, like the plus signs inside the distance formula and the plus signs in the equation. So make sure you don't forget the plus signs. What number do I get on the right-hand side? Mm -hmm, 169. And that's what you'll find inside the choices. Not even 9.30 or 8.30 and we're already almost done. Okay, the other one's a harder one. So it might take us a little bit of time to do number eight.
So let me go write down the information for number eight. So it says endpoints of a diameter. So does anybody remember the game plan for this problem? We saw one yesterday. That was yesterday, right? <laughs> does anybody remember what the game plan was when we did that one? You had lots of choices on this one. We did use the midpoint formula and that was to find what? Mm -hmm. And then what were we trying to find when we did that? Yes. So he's got the three different ways where to find the radius. And what am I going to use the midpoint formula for, though? Right. So we use the midpoint to get that center. We'll equal the center. And then we use the distance formula to get that um, radius. Okay. But in order for me to get the radius and not the diameter, what did we have to do specifically to get the radius instead of the diameter? And what else? So one of these guys and what else? Yes, good. Okay, so we're gonna say distant. I'll, I'll write this differently, okay? So I'm gonna say the radius equals the distance between the midpoint and one of these diameter points. I don't wanna put an S, diameter point, right? Cause you have to pick one. This is the most messiest eraser ever. Okay. Did you have to pick one? And just for convenience, which one would you choose? Right, why would you wanna choose seven and 19? Exactly, they're both positive, so it makes it a little bit nicer when you put everybody in, right? You don't have all those double signs and all that, okay? So yeah, so we would have to first figure out the midpoint, but then eventually we're gonna pick this problem and that midpoint to get the distance for the radius. Okay, let's start doing it though first. Midpoint is going to be this formula. Okay, and so then let me label my guys over here. This is gonna be X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So then we have 11 plus 7 over 2, and negative 5 plus 19 over 2. So then here I'll get 18 over 2 and 14 over 2, and those actually both turn out to nice numbers. That's just a 9 and a 7. So that's good. That makes sense, right? Between 11 and 7, isn't 9 in between 11 and 7? And then between negative five and 19, isn't positive seven in there in the middle somewhere? Okay. So that makes sense. Um, now the radius is the, the other one. So the radius, we're gonna do the distance formula, but it's gonna have to be between the midpoint and the, this point that we chose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write those points over here and label them again. And the reason why I'm writing them again is because you don't want to plug in x1 and x y1 from up here, right? You don't want to do that in your distance formula because we're not using this point in our distance formula. So I'm taking the two points that I'm going to find the radius between, which is the center and a diameter point, right? Those are the two guys that I'm going to take the radius or the distance between. So I'm gonna label these guys x1, y1, x2, y2. 
And so let's start plugging it in. It should be x2 first, which is 7, and then x1 next, which is 9. Then y2 first, which is 19, minus y1, which is 7. So here I get a negative 2 squared, and here I get, what, a 12 squared? So then this turns out to be a positive 4 plus a 144, which gives me 148. Now, usually have to, well, it depends. If the problem specifically asks you to identify the radius, you usually do have to simplify that into its um, nicer form, its reduced form. I don't even know if it has one, so I'm gonna go check. It does, it would be two square root of 37. So if they asked you to identify the radius, you could. But when you're plugging it into the formula, it's kind of nicer to use the unsimplified version, right? Because then the square and the square root will just cancel, right? It's a little bit more complicated when you're trying to square that number, okay? So for the equation, I'm gonna use this number. So here we go, x minus something squared, y minus something squared equal to something squared. Who goes in here? Mm -hmm. Because it's supposed to be h, right? And who's h? The nine, because that's the center, right? That's the x value of the center. So this guy, if I put it in another color, this guy right here is the H, and this guy right here is the K, and you already know that this guy right here is the radius, right? So we're plugging everybody in. The nine goes there, the seven goes here, and then the square root of 148 goes there. I'm gonna lift it up a little bit because the little icons are in the way. So you cannot really clean up this because there's no double signs or anything like that. So that side's just going to stay exactly the way it is. But what do you get on the right hand side? Mm -hmm. Regular 140. The square and the square root just cancel. And so that's what you should look for in your choices. Okay, so that one was a little bit more involved, right? You had to remember, get the midpoint, then that's not going to be my center. So I now know my H and my K. Then go grab one of those original points and the center, do the distance formula, and then you'll get the radius. And once you know the H, the K, and the R, you're ready for the equation. Okay, there will be one of these on the test, I promise you. So make sure you try to get that process down. Okay. This is not. I don't want to sound discouraging or anything, but this has like a, a, a little bit more process, right? Than the other, other problems. This has one, two, three, four, about four steps in this process, okay? Four things that you need to consider in that process. Throughout the rest of the semester, you're gonna have some problems that have like 10 steps to their problem. And that's the whole point of this college algebra stuff is if I can pile on the processes on you enough and you can get through it all to that final answer, that's what's practicing all of that, um, all of those decision-making and logic and all of that in your brain. That's the whole point of why you have to take math, just FYI, okay? It's to practice that part of your brain. And so the more processes that we tack on, the harder you're exercising that part of your brain, okay? So just keep in mind, <laughs> some problems will just be one step or two steps, and then some will have like multiple parts of them, okay? Okay, let's go see what number nine and number 10, I think those are easier than number eight. Yeah, so number nine just asks us to identify the center and the radius. Now this one can be tricky, especially if you don't see the minuses, right? Because we know that the H, it's always X minus H, right? 
And so because they have x minus, we can already assume that this is going to be the h, right? So I know that the x coordinate there is going to be one. However, when you have the plus signs in the middle, the answer is not just going to be four, okay? It has to be that standard form. But how do you get a plus sign? A double negative, right? So if you imagine this, like the one line that's going horizontal is the minus sign. And then the vertical line that makes that plus sign, we kind of just rotated it <laughs> and stuck it over there with the four, right? It's now a negative four. So you have y minus a negative four, okay? If I look at this as y minus a negative four, then what is the k? Negative four. Another way people will look at it is they'll say, if I'm gonna pick out the center, if I'm just gonna pick it out, I have to pick out the opposite sign of what's inside those parentheses. So notice how in this parentheses, it says minus one, but we wrote positive one, right? And here it says positive four, but we wrote negative four, okay? So as long as you think of it that way, you can do that as well, okay? Always do the opposite when you're taking out that center, okay? Now the radius is gonna be what? Right, because 16 is not the R. 16 is the R squared, right? So if you take the square root of that number, then you should end up with the actual R. And the square root of 16, is like she said four, right? And if you ever have a number you don't know the square root, you can always just type it in your calculator and it will tell you, okay? So I can type square root of 16 and it will give me a four. Now, how do I draw this? First, click on the circle and then I don't know what it's gonna make me do. I think I have to label it on the center first. So I'm gonna put a point there and then I'm gonna drag it no, it's not doing what I want it to do. Oh yeah, did it do it? Okay, is this the correct graph? I do have the right center, right? It's one and negative four, but is this point correct? No, what is the radius between my center and this second point that I accidentally clicked? It is, it's only one, two, three right now, right? So I need to stretch it out one more. <laughs> And then now I have four, right? And that's the graph. As long as your radius right here between these two is four units, then you're good, okay? And I could have gone to the right, I could have gone up, I could have gone to the left, I could have gone down, it doesn't matter, as long as you got that four radius. What you can't do is diagonal because it doesn't work like that, right? It's not four diagonals, right? Four diagonals will put me all the way over here. So make sure you either go directly to the right, directly to the left, directly up or directly down to get that radius, okay? Now here, what is going to be my center? Yes, zero, because there's nothing in the X squared, right? So zero, and then you pick out the opposite. So you're right, zero and one. Good. What is the radius? Exactly, the square root of nine is three. So then this one, I'm gonna click on that circle, zero and one is there. And then if I drag it out, I don't know why this thing's not working. Um, one, two, three, about right there. Yeah, and now it gives me. So you click, you click on the circle and then you click the center and then you click the other point where you want it and it just draws a circle, okay? Not too bad. I don't think I answered all the questions, but let's see if what we did answer was right. The ones with the equations I left blank, right? So 10 was good, nine was good. Those I didn't type in my answers and those were all good. So not too bad, not too bad. Does anybody have any questions over anything? Good, you're ready. <laughs> okay, so that's all I have for you. Let me go ahead and stop the recording. I don't need.